Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be bringing you my Immortal Macro PvP build for the Waking Flames DLC. Now, a little disclaimer. You guys are going to get teabagged. You will get direct message. You will get whispered. So, just throwing it out there before we get into today's video. Welcome back guys, hopefully you enjoyed watching the clips as much as I enjoyed making them. This has been a really fun build, I'm not gonna lie to you fellas, I've actually had more fun on this class than any other solo PvP class I've played thus far on the patch, and since the hard nerf to Rothgar, I feared I owed you guys an updated macro PvP build video, so... Let's hop into it, but not before we thank our patrons because they are the bread and butter of this channel. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I really do. And also, don't forget, guys, I'm doing PvP Top 5. Please send your clips to horcruxeso at yahoo.com. So, let's hop into the build, guys. We're not going to waste any time. So, here's the character sheet. Everything completely unbuffed. Not going to bother buffing it because, as you guys saw in the clips, uh, the stats really don't matter. The only thing that really matters is how... I think you are and how big your burst is you guys saw uh it's both uh hella spell penetration we are a breton breton is very important otherwise you have to run a cost reduction jewelry piece which i don't want to do so we are breton he's everything completely unbuffed i can't really buff up with a spell power pot but uh it does go up to like almost 4k you know and then a continuous attack brings it to like almost 5k it, you guys can do the math right we got 2k crit resist it's great atro mundus uh this is yeah, probably one of the best in slot mundus is like you get the most bang for your buck with this one. And then we have the Bewitch Sugar Skulls. These are the cheapest and by far, you know, just the best. They, they give you tri stats. I mean, health recovery is nice, even though they nerfed it to the ground. But uh, yeah, it, it's still the best food, in my opinion. Yeah, hands down. So, as you guys can probably guess, the first set we're running, fellas, is Lightning Staff of Dark Convergence. We're running a sharpening trait on this. So we're using this to set up our burst combo. We don't even really care about the damage it does. We're just using it to pull everyone together. Notice we have a charge weapon enchantment as well. It's a proc minor vulnerability. So here's the two, three, four, five pieces. You guys are well aware of what Dark Convergence is by now. This is what we're running on our front bar. Back bar, we're running Iron Blood. I'm running a Restoration Staff because you do not need a Sword and Board to mitigate damage once your Iron Blood procs. Oh man, you are a tank. So it's very important for you to have Healing Over Time abilities to help transition that tankiness to your front bar. Just so you can keep up the pressure and get your combo off. Uh, we have a Spell Damage Enchantment on our back bar. So when we go in for a combo, we're always going to Light Attack on our back bar and swap to our front bar Defending Trade as well. I've considered swapping this to Powered. Uh, but I don't have the stones to you know really test and try it out. It's really not worth the trying out, in my opinion, to waste 50 stones on this. But I think powered would work as well. Iron blood, so it gives you health, armor, armor, and then when you take damage, it does slow you by like 50%, but you take 30% less damage. Okay, there's easy ways to get around this slow if you're able to roll dodge and b hop. 
you keep your momentum so the slow really isn't too noticeable i actually have a video on how to do that in my last magica macro build video and i will leave that in the uh, the corner of the screen somewhere so that's where we're running our back bar the monster set we're running we're running uh balorgs so what this set does it gives you weapon and spell damage and then when you use your ultimate uh depending on how much ultimate you actually use you get weapon spell damage and spell penetration from that which is wonderful because it procs our harmony it procs you know it helps proc dc you know bolster the damage excuse me not procs uh when it comes to armor spread, I believe we're running uh, one heavy, one medium, and then the rest light. The reason we're doing this is to maximize our spell penetration as well as our cost reduction because we don't need to be any more tanky than we already are. You could argue that medium armor would potentially be better, but you can't really factor, you can't really get medium armor pieces out of this. The best you could do was two medium armor uh, helmet pieces. So I just went for the no, basic 511 build. You're tanky enough, you don't need any more heavy than you already have. Now, when it comes to the jewelry, yes, we're running Iron Blood. I have the jewelry, Iron Bloods, because I want 5 light. Uh, you can transmute your Dark Convergence to Harmony, but I wouldn't suggest that because you're running a lot more heavy pieces, which means you're going to have a lot less damage. So I'm running spell damage on absolutely everything because you just simply do not need the sustain the way this build is oriented and set up. And I'll go over all the combos here in just a moment. And then the last set we're running is, of course, Malakan. Very cookie cutter. I know you guys have got hit by this build a few times. And I know I'm going to get flamed in the comments for running this but guys if you are solo anything is fair game i'm not gonna lie i, I know i give you night blades a hard time about running cloak but if you are solo anything's fair game in my opinion in open world okay so let's get into the skills the skills will be pretty interesting so i'm running mystic siphon on the front bar uh, because this is kind of like a turtle play style you want people to dogpile on you that's that's number one priority is get people to dogpile on you when iron blood procs that's beautiful because you can now live through whatever burst is coming that gives you a chance to go to your front bar to set up the combo I mean, that's how this set functions you can't really chase people it, it's not a setup like that it's to get, draw people into you and then just one bang them so we have mystic siphon this gives us uh, a passive three percent uh damage increase on our front bar plus it restores our magic out over time plus it does a pretty hell of a decent job when people are on top of you and you have a corpse up this actually does a lot of damage and the fact that it does shock damage as well that it inflicts people with minor vulnerability uh we're talking blast bones we're going to use this for a combo which i will discuss in just a moment and then we have mortal coil this is a really good healing over time as well on your front bar and also restores stamina and also increases your healing done and keep in mind, Mortal Coil and Mystic Siphon doesn't cost any mana. It's just corpses. And then Pulsar will come back to, into a second. Avid Boneyard, this is what we're using to set up our Harmony proc. You guys know you run this morph and you're able to proc your own synergy. Now, there are a lot of bugs with the Avid Boneyard. I'll leave you guys uh, fear that out yourself. But if you have any issues with your Boneyard not procing, I'll be happy to respond to them in the comments. And then we're running Flawless Dawnbreaker. We're running Flawless Dawnbreaker because it gives you the extra spell damage over the duration. Now, you don't necessarily want the stun. Yes, it does more damage, but the overall increase in spell damage for 20 seconds when it's at max rank is way more beneficial than just having the extra burst on your Dawnbreaker because this allows you to not only get one combo off, but you can actually get a second combo off within the 20 second duration of the spell damage buff. Now, back bar running Spirit Guardian, this guy pretty much absorbs 10% of all damage it's untargetable it's immune you know it's, it's immortal essentially so you're 10% more tanky just by running this Resi resistant flesh is an amazing ability it's it's a phenomenal heal you just you just have to be careful if you're around people and you need the self heals don't be looking at them because it will actually heal them instead of you this gives you a shit ton of resistances for ever how much you heal let's say if you get like an 11k heal right and we're going to die to this fucking boss during the video because people can't leave well enough alone. I just wanted a cool background. <laughs> Running Rapid Regeneration on our back bar. Uh, this is our, you know, one of the best hots in the game, if not the best. It's super cheap to cast as well. Summoner's Armor. Uh, we're running this one over the one that pulls people uh, for the simple fact that 
you know, like you don't want to mess up your combo. So this is great. Plus it reduces the cost of your blast bones and uh, spirit mender. And degeneration arm back bar for our source and major sorcery. And then pestilent Colossus if you really want to wipe some zergs. Now you can run the, uh, you know, whatever ultimate you want. I just prefer pestilent Colossus. Now let's go back to the front bar. Pulsar, there's two different ways to run this build. If you are in a group, like a very small man group, I would suggest running Pulsar like 100% of the time. A Pulsar is pretty amazing for what it does. So it inflicts people with minor mangle. And that reduces your max health by 10%. So that's our 10% of their health gone. Off the top, just gone for your burst combo. Plus it does damage. Okay. Plus it's going to inflict them with minor vulnerability. All right. And the damage increases for everyone in the AoE. It's really, really good. The 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 shock version of you know Soren Pulsar. Um, as you guys saw in the clips, you know at the beginning, it it's very very fun to use. But the only thing that you lack is a chase down mechanic. For example, someone gets away and they have you know a Bzik or the health. You don't really have a spammable to go after them. So if you don't want to run the uh, Pulsar, you can run Force Pulse as well. And if you have access to the Sigic Order skill line, you can also run Ellie Weapon if you wanted to do so. Now, one more flex spot. Uh, I would not suggest removing Mortal Coil, but you could possibly remove Mystic Siphon for Inner Light type. I wouldn't suggest it. I think Mystic Siphon is just a great uh, kind of filler ability to spam. So, that does it for the skill setups and kind of the variations thereof. And we'll be cutting away to how to set up the combo right about now. Okay, guys, so we're going to be going over the combo. So the combo is pretty simple. You just want to have your buffs up, your own light attack on your back bar. Summoning Blast Bones, Graveyard, Pulsar, Dawnbreaker, Synergy. Very simple. I know I have Force Bolts here in the video. But again, you want to have your buffs up. You will want to Blast Bones. You will want to Avid Boneyard. Pulsar as soon as you drop your Boneyard because you need to inflict people with minor mangle already cutting 10% of their health off completely inflicting them with minor vulnerability which is also increased damage then you want to Dawnbreaker into your harmony that will give you the most bang for your buck fellas okay guys welcome back another thing to mention is it's very important to have some immovable pots because one of the harmony bugs if you if you drop your Boneyard and you get CC'd you cannot activate the synergy so I would suggest having some immovable pots on you, and then typically I just run tripods. Now, let's get into the champion system. So the passes we're running right now, we're running Master at Arms, running Biting Ores. Now, I've been playing around with a Coal Overload. Uh, this is pretty interesting, but uh, Ironclad is the last passive, but Coal Overload, whenever you kill an enemy under the effects of a status effect, which they will be almost 100% of the time if you're running like the Pulsar build, they actually explode and they deal like 4,000 oblivion damage. Now, you don't have to run this, obviously. Uh, this is just kind of a flex spot. Um, you can either run uh, Raffle Strikes or you can run a, uh, a healing passive. You don't really need any more mitigation, just the more healing is better. If you want to stack in a little bit more damage, Untamed Aggression is fine too, but you're only getting 150 spell damage for a, an entire passive, which is pretty underwhelming in my opinion. So let's go over to Red Tree. So we're running a Pain's Refugee or Refuge, you know, whatever. Uh, if you're 1VXing, this is an absolute must. F for every negative effect you have on you, you take 20% less damage, so. Sustained by suffering, this gives you recovery when you're affected by a negative effect, which is all the time. Rank 45, uh, fortify, which gives you 1700 armor, and then also a boundless vitality. These two are just kind of flexes as, as well. You can mix and match these however you want. If you want more sustain, there are a, a, another sustain tree skill. And then if you run something you know, like slippery or something that makes your combat abilities cost less, you know, you you you, you can do that as well. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Yes, yeah, Survival Instincts was the other one. Um, I just like having Fortified Balance Vitality because it's effective 100% of the time. You know, this is always passive mitigation. It's always extra health. So, And then the Green Tree really doesn't matter. Just uh, if you have the points to get a little bit of efficiency because potions ain't cheap, fellas. And that about does it for the build. Flame me, go ahead. I know it's a very meta-esque set, but if you're going to play macro, this, this is... 
one, if not the only way to play it. If there is a different way to play macro, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to try out something different uh, because you guys know I love running off meta stuff. So anyways, please like and sub, eviscerate the like button if you made it to the end of the video. And I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.